One word today would be uncertainty. And that's because I really don't want to do this research project today. What I'm going to do is only do Uber Eats and see just how much I can make. Why the uncertainty? I could make hardly anything or I could make quite a bit. And so I want you to join me on this journey and just see how it all works out. Is this something that you could do as well? Could you just survive on one app? My name is Russ and I make videos to help drivers like you, so welcome. First, we're gonna go gas up and then we're gonna hit the road and see what kind of orders we get. I do wanna mention, actively since March, I've been really trying to increase my acceptance rate on Uber Eats, doing a test and see just if I get higher paying orders or how that works out. So since March, roughly it's been 68%. I'm at 97% right now. But anecdotally, it just seems like the last couple months have been really slow and I haven't been getting many orders at all. So today's gonna be a great challenge. Let's see how many we get. And I really hope that I make some decent money because I know being on the other apps, I'm giving up opportunities to earn because Amazon Flex may be busy, Instacart, Grubhub. So let's get going. All right, let's get going. Looks like we need some gas. And isn't that interesting? 18.3 miles per gallon. I reset this between every oil change. 87 looks like 539. 89 is 559 and 569 for the old 91. So ask in the comments below if you want to know why I'm putting 91 in the car. Gas is full. We're ready to go. This way we're full so I can tell you how many miles we drive today and that'll help figure out the dollars per mile and dollars per hour. Since January, I've been tracking my online time as well as my active time on Uber Eats. So I just wanted to share this interesting fact. So I've done a total of 191 trips on Uber Eats and these are in minutes. So basically 10,272 minutes of online time, 3,850 minutes of active time. When you do the dividing, that ends up working out Active time per trip is 20 minutes. So that means over this entire eight months, pretty much I get an active order. It takes me about 20 minutes to do it. Now, more surprisingly, 54 minutes between orders, and that's online time. So that means I'm waiting for an order. So hopefully that's not gonna continue today because usually I'm multi-apping and that's why I'm not necessarily always online. But now I'm fully gonna be online and committed to Uber Eats. So hopefully Uber Eats is gonna send me these orders and it's not gonna be one every 54 minutes. So I would imagine the 20 minutes per order probably will average about the same. So this is gonna be good. I did update the Uber Eats app and so we're gonna get on here. All right, so it is Friday, the 25th of August, and it's almost nine o'clock, it's 8.55. Let's get on Uber Eats, and I really hope we get some orders. And that means back-to-back, -back, high paying, low miles, busy all day. I do multi-app, and that gives you flexibility because if one app is slow like Uber Eats, maybe Grubhub, Instacart, Amazon Flex, maybe they're busier. But today, again, I really don't want to do this research project, but I feel I have to because my acceptance rate is at 97% and to not get hardly any orders anytime I've been on is very disturbing. So please share in the comments below if this has been a trend for you. Has Uber Eats been really exceedingly slow? Please let me know. I am ready, I am willing, and I am able. Come on, Uber Eats, give me some orders. Now I do wanna mention, I'm not gonna just be sitting here. I will travel to different areas where I know it's gonna be busy. Coming up you know, here in a few hours, we have the lunch rush. And then there are orders now in the morning and in the afternoon. And I do plan after I eat dinner to go out tonight and do some orders. So I'll get back with you when we get our first one. All right, so I got my first Uber Eats order. It was $8 and just a few miles. And it looks like uh, 352, so it should be roughly a four something tip. I'm so happy, at least I got an order and it took an hour to get an order. It took about 15 minutes to complete it. So 
I'm grateful. Maybe these gig apps humble us to where when it's slow, we're just grateful to have a job and earn any money. And just to share little tips, I use the timestamp camera app to keep my own copy of a picture. That way, if something happens in the future, I have it. And it puts the GPS location in there, the date, time. It's very helpful. Have a good day. So it looks like, in case you're interested, the customer paid a total of $9.13. Of that, $5.61 was to Uber Eats for their fee. And then I got a fare of $3.52. Now there is a tip in there. It'll come later, roughly total of $8. So that's like a four something tip. It was only three miles, took me about 15 minutes. Normally, if I would get these orders back to back, they'd be great. In your area, you may not have Prop 22. That is an added bonus for me to be able to earn more money here in California. Generally, the tips that I'll give apply to everybody across the United States, not necessarily in places where there's a law giving you more money than normally you would earn on that app. But in my case, being here in California, I am grateful to have Prop 22 because it gives me some extra money that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Before Prop 22 and AB5, you just had to be responsible and know which orders to take that were profitable or not. But now things have changed to where you can be a little more flexible and forgiving on your standards and accept orders that you normally wouldn't because at least you're gonna be making that extra money. The 130% of the uh, minimum wage and then right now they're paying 34 cents a mile. So I've moved to two different cities. This is the third city that I'm in. There's a lot more businesses and money in this area but in all the areas that i've been so far i know the area and i know that there's orders previously just not right now but i'm not giving up and again i'm not going to get discouraged what it makes me feel like is when i was new to food delivery and i only had one app and i would just hope oh please let there be orders and that wasn't always the case and sometimes you would drive city to city so my research project today makes me reminisce like when I was new. But this will be a good test to see if multi-apping is the way to go or relying on just one app could be an option. And again, in previous videos I've mentioned, I've met the two DoorDash drivers that do it full-time and they're doing great. So I only do this part-time so it's not really fair for me to say that, oh, only Uber Eats would be the way to go or DoorDash. It really depends on the time that you spend on the apps. And I would imagine those companies reward you for your diligent service to them, for being willing to work exclusively for them and take orders. And if it makes me feel better or you, I have had Instacart on, I have not seen well, I shouldn't say I haven't seen an order. They were very poor orders, but if I was out multi-apping, I would be very disappointed. I would say that Instacart is slow as well. So where I'm at now, it's 1130. Really, I should be getting lunch orders. And I may even get some that go to Malibu or other places a little bit further away. So I'm willing to make money. I do want to get my acceptance rate on Uber Eats up to 100%, and so I'm willing to do anything. Uber Eats, please send me the orders. Hello, it's 12.05. Got this long distance delivery from Uber Eats. It came in at 17.04 for 15 miles. I'm just grateful <laughs> to have the chance to earn some money. It is a long trip. Let's get it done. I've already picked up the food and drinks in the back and let's get on the road. And I always hold on to the drink and the drink holder, putting one at a time in there. That way we always have contact. Oh, nice. A live order. Definitely gonna take that. At least it's picking up.
would you take this Uber Eats $3.70 order three miles from Wingstop? It's a 20-piece chicken wing combo. Meet at the door. Hey, Juan. How's it going? You want me to give it to you or leave it at the door? Thank you. Cool. Have a great afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back. Just a quick update. I've done a total of five orders, but let's back up two orders. Wanted to go over this with you. So I received an offer from Wingstop. It was 370, 2.9 miles. And why did I take that order? Well, obviously I'm trying to get my acceptance rate up, but who in their right mind would do that? That's obviously a no tip order. Let's dig into that customer payment. It did say meet at the door and there was no cash tip. So when I looked into what the gentleman had paid and he did get like a 20 wing combo, say that's like $30. So he ended up being charged by Uber $17.84. My pay was $3.70. Guess how much that Uber Eats service fee was? $14.14. .14. So let me guess, if you're already paying $17.84, wouldn't you assume that the driver's getting most of that? Why would Uber get $14 out of that order? On my next order, I met Chris, a part-time driver as well, and it was very nice to meet you, Chris. I did tell you that I made $25 from $8.45. It's about $1.45 right now. But right after that, all the tips started rolling in. So right now I'm about $42, but still, that's 9, 10, 11, 12, one. That's five hours eight dollars an hour that's definitely not good so far hopefully the orders are going to pick up and again here in california we get prop 22 so i probably will get some money from that but if you're using me as an example if you're not in a state where they have a prop 22 type law i don't know that this would be worth it for you eight dollars plus i'm sitting at a quarter tank of gas that i've already used so it's not looking good so far but I am hopeful that more orders are gonna come this afternoon and then after dinner when I go back out for the dinner rush and just see how I do overall. So I really am looking forward to giving you those updates when they're done. So here's a bonus tip for you. It would take you less than two seconds to do this with every order. Have you ever thought that just by reaching out to the customer and saying thank you or having a kind word of encouragement, that might do wonders for them increasing your tip or giving you a tip. And if nothing else, you're out doing food delivery. Why not enjoy your day? Help put a smile on the customer's face as well. So what I've done, and there's previous videos on this that I've made, I make a shortcut in my phone. So within five minutes of making that delivery, I send this to the customer. And it says, hello, I am Russ with Uber Eats. I will be there soon. Later, please don't forget to rate my service. Thank you. It's a pleasure serving you, Russ. So this message is just one way to have that human to human connection, showing that you care about them as the customer. Now at drop off, after I take a picture with my timestamp camera app for my copy, I also take a picture in the app and then you have an opportunity to send another message. This is when I also have the message saved in my phone and it just says, have a great rest of your day and thank you again, Russ. So these take less than two seconds for you to do and there's a chance that they might increase your tip, but overall, it's just good customer service to the customer. Because I was like, oh, the driveway silver mailbox. I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> You're not the first one to get confused and you won't be the last. I try not to mess things up, especially when people give directions from the beginning. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. There was a time that... All right, well, have a great day. Have a great day. You want me to set it in here? That's good. There's that. Thank you. Awesome. And the last one is the meat. This one's heavy. Great. Great. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Well, hello and surprise, surprise. Guess where I'm at? That's right. The beautiful Pacific Ocean. You know, people pay here to come on vacation and I get to be paid to do food delivery and get a beautiful view of the ocean. It's really nice. So what brought me here? I had a double stack order on Uber Eats 
the quote was $30 coming out here to Malibu, roughly 15 miles. So today overall was slow. I made about $50 before I got this one. So I'm guessing it's gonna be about $80. And I've already driven 110 miles. So we'll just say total 125 coming back. That's 64 cents per mile. That's definitely not good. So outside of California without Prop 22, today was not a good example of uh, just staying on one app. But we'll see if I get any other orders going back. Things hopefully will pick up. It's a Friday afternoon. As you can clearly see behind me, it's beautiful and people should be out enjoying the weekends. Maybe they'll be ordering food. So I'm gonna get back on the road and see if I get more orders. Is there a problem at the restaurant at all? No. They, um, it wasn't ready when I got there. Oh, that's um, cause but. Because you're the second one they sent to get it. Are you serious? One, like was there, I was watching, he was there for like 10 minutes and then they said, and then he just disappeared. I guess he got tired of waiting. Oh. I don't know if it was a problem with the restaurant or something happened. Okay. The, like probably the driver just got tired of waiting. But actually, they shouldn't do that because with Prop 22 money, basically we're getting paid to wait. Oh, gotcha. So, <laughs> well, thank all right. You very much. Yep. Have a good weekend. Hello, everybody. I declare the day is done. So I've got some stats for you after my experiment of trying to accept every Uber Eats order and only doing Uber Eats today. So I have some lessons for you to take away. First of all, I made a total of $105. I worked eight hours, that works out to $13 per hour. Now in California, that'll be higher because of Prop 22, but for your average state out there, $13 per hour, not very good, but if you need the money, then so be it. Now I did spend $38 in gas. Gas is a little pricey out here, so that's something to keep in mind that I actually made less, and I'm gonna have to pay taxes on those profits. I ended up driving a total of 140 miles. So 105 divided by 140, that works out to 75 cents per mile. Now, what was this sudden spike? If you recall, it was like 60 cents earlier. Well, when I did those trips to Malibu, one was a no tip, the other one was a $31 tip. So obviously I wasn't planning on that, but I'm very grateful for the money. Up next, let's take a look at the difference between the online time and the active time. If you recall for eight months worth of data, the active time worked out to 20 minutes per order on average. And the online time, meaning I'm waiting for something to happen, was 54 minutes. Well, wouldn't you know it, the math worked out pretty similar today. I had online time of 488 minutes. And if you divide that by the nine trips, that works out to 54 minutes. My active time was 210 minutes. So when you divide that by nine, that works out to 23 minutes per order. So isn't that interesting how the data works out? You have eight months worth of data and then just one day experiment and it kind of works out the same. So take that for what it's worth. It was slow. So I can only imagine, and this would be the key learning. If you work peak meal times and don't work during the slow parts of the day, I think these numbers are gonna be much lower and you'll be making more. Now, my case is different. I have limited availability and so I have to work all day and I don't really have the luxury of picking and choosing different times. That's just how it is. So in your case, it may be different in your market. If you need the money, you're gonna be out there all day and night anyway. But if you have a choice and you can just work peak meal hours, then obviously you're gonna make more, less time. So in the beginning of this video, I wanted to share uncertainty was my word of the day. And believe me, I felt that uncertainty all throughout the day. It was so slow did a few trips in like three or four cities, had some long distance trips, and then I ended up getting quite a few orders there, then nothing. And then finally I got that trip out to Malibu. And then I did have one more after that. All right, so let's cut to the chase. This was not something that I'd be bragging about to my friends and family. Look, I made 105 today and I spent 38 on gas and I worked eight hours, no. So in your market, it may be different. Here I have Prop 22, so it'll add a little bit, I'm sure, later. But still, that wasn't a $200 day or even higher. So that brings up the question, what's better, working on one app or being on two or three different platforms? And incidentally, 
I did make a video exploring this, so I'll link that here for your consideration. In there, you can answer the debate, what's better, having one or more? And what are the pros and cons of that? So I'll see you there.